It is a cold, dry, foggy morning in early spring. And in a few hours since dawn, two young men have put nearly ten miles between themselves and London. Ten miles closer, perhaps, to the fortune that one, the leader and stronger of the two, is seeking. Ten miles further from a certain Mr. Ralph Nickleby. Where are, we, where are we heading for, Mr. Nicholas? Well, Smike, there's no harm in telling you, I suppose. No one else will find out. Find out what? That we are making for Portsmouth. Portsmouth or Port Royal. It's all the same to Smike, as long as he and Nicholas are together. Now, I don't know much about these things, but Portsmouth is a seaport town. And if there's no other work, well, I think we might get on board some ship. I'm young and active and can make myself pretty useful. So could you. I hope so. When I was at that... Uh, do you know where I mean? Yes, yeah, I know. You needn't say the name, Smite. Well, when I was there, I could milk a cow and groom a horse as good as anyone. Well, I don't know they usually keep many animals of either sort on board ship. Still, you could learn something else. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm, I'm very well in. God knows you are. And if you fail, it shall go hard, but I'll do enough for us both. Are we going all the way today? <laughs> no, that would be a bit too far, even for your willing legs. No, uh, Godalming is still 30 miles on our way, and I think we'll rest there tonight. We'll push on again tomorrow, since we're not rich enough to dawdle. Smite, can I ask you a question while we're alone? Do you have a good memory? Oh, I... I, I think I had once. I don't know, it, it's all gone now. All gone. Why do you think you had once? Because uh, I, I could remember when, when I was young, little, a child. <laughs> but that, that, that was a long time ago. I, I think it was. I, I was always at that place. That that. Do the boys? Uh, you don't say it. And th there I was. I could never remember, uh, and sometimes it, it, it was like I couldn't. What they were saying to me, I, I could somehow understand that. I, uh, there was, uh, I could... Now your I'd, mind is wandering, old fellow. Oh. So cold. Smite. So cold. Smite. Huh? Sit there, and I want you to... to remember. Remember? The first day you went to Yorkshire. You, the first? Before it all got mixed up and lost. What was the weather? The, uh, it was... I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Hot or cold? Wet. wet. Very wet. Because I used to say after, when it rained heavy, it was like the night I came. They used to crowd round and laugh whenever it rained heavy because... Because I would cry. What were you like then? Small. I was small. And how did you get there? Alone? No. Oh, no. Who was with you? Uh, a man. A, a dark, withered man. I, I remember they said so at the school. He, he brought me there. Do you remember anything else about this man? Uh, I, I was frightened of him. Yes, I was. And glad when he went away. But they made me frightened of them, too. Now, look at me, Smike. Think hard. Do you remember no woman, no kind, gentle woman who, who looked down at you, leant down and kissed you? No one who called you her child? No. Uh, nor any house but that place in Yorkshire? No house but a room. I, I slept in a room. A large lonely room at the top of an house where there was a, a trap door in the ceiling. I used to cover my head with the bedclothes not to see it, for it frightened me. I've never forgotten that room because every time I have a nightmare, there it is. Just as it was. And I see things and people in it that I've never seen in it. <laughs> Damn man! Boy! Yes, I don't 
<laughs> oh, the people and the, the things change, but there's that room. The room never changes. Will you let me take the bundle now? No. No, no, let, let, let's go on. Oh, very well. Let's see you make a leg of it then, Smythe, eh? Make a leg of it, Mr. Nicholas. What's that mean? Can't make nothing. Come on. Nicholas had listened with his whole attention to Smythe's story, and it remains indelibly fastened in his memory. He goes over it as they walk on through the heat of the day. He puzzles through it overnight. The pair set off the next morning with a good spirit, though it turns out to be a harder day's journey. For there are many and weary hills to climb, and in journeys, as in life, it is a great deal easier to go downhill than up. What does this stand say? Uh, to Portsmouth, twelve miles. Twelve miles. Is, it, is that far? Uh, it's too far for us tonight, I think. Can you see the inn there on the next rise? You think you can reach that, Smythe? Oh, I think I can, Mr. Nicholas. I know you can, if you'll let me take the bundle. No, no. No, no. no. Right, no. now, step out for bed and supper. Or at least, what supper we can afford, eh? <laughs> oh, that's my... On arriving at the inn... This way, gentlemen. You've walked a fair way, and you'll be in need of some good feeding, I reckon. The landlord ushers them into the parlour where Nicholas and Smike are to share in the hot beefsteak pudding of another guest. A hot beefsteak pudding they cannot in any way afford. Sir, I, uh, <clears throat> The landlord appears to have made a mistake. He showed us to the wrong... Why can't I speak out? Sir, as you see, we have arrived on foot. We are dusty. We are travelling in a very humble manner, and I can quite see that you may not wish to share our company. Bless you, sir. I ain't particular, and besides... I like your way of talking. Take a seat, sir, and your he don't say much to it. Both of you, sit down, and I'll be with you in a jiffy after this. Nicholas is prepared for something odd, but not for what occurs. The gentleman claps his hands. The door bursts open, and a couple of boys, one extremely tall, the other extremely short, burst into the room, both dressed as sailors, and proceed to duel furiously with wooden swords. <laughs> There's a picture, eh, sir? The little one has him. If the big one don't knock him down in three seconds, why, he's a dead man. <laughs> oh, very good, boys. Do it again. Their swords emit their showers of sparks. Yes. They plunge, they swing, they grapple, and the little one goes down. But not out. Come on, lads. With a will. Ooh, ooh. Ah, what? A ah, 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 ah. Press on, boys. The little one draws a flintlock from his belt and <laughs> regains the moral imperative as his opponent spins one way, then the other, and falls to the floor. Oh, no. What do you think of that, sir? Oh, very good indeed. Capital. Off you go, boys. You don't see such boys as those are on, I think. Both mine, you know, runs in the family. The theatre does. Well, if they were only a little better matched. Matched? Well, more of a size. Size? How are you to get the audience sympathy if there isn't a game, little un, against a great big wrong un? Oh, I... I see. That uh, um, hadn't occurred to me. Ah, it's the main point of the thing. I open at Portsmouth the day after tomorrow. If you're going there, look into the theatre and you'll see how well it'll sell. Now, sir, let's look into this here pudding and see how we acquit ourselves. Ah. <laughs> 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 So you're on the Portsmouth Road. May the Crummles Company count on your custom. Well, uh... Do you know the town at all? No. Never there? Mm, never. You don't say a lot, do you? But more than your friend. Though I must say, he's got a capital face. Mm. Well, I wish it were a little less haggard and a little more plump, poor fellow. No! You'd spoil it forever. You think so? As he is now. Without a pad on his body and hardly a touch of makeup. He'd be the best starveling on the English. The British stayed Romeo and Juliet. The apothecary. Perfect. Trust me. Dab of red on the nose. Uh, uh, it's all right, Mike. Go back to your supper. 
You view him with a professional eye. And well, I may, I never saw a young fellow so regularly cut out for the skin and bone side of it. And I've been in the trade since I played the heavy child at 18 months. <laughs> at this point, the two young gladiators return, mm. and all present give their attention mm. and then their applause to the steak pudding, mm. after which the young gentleman and Smike retire, and Nicholas and Mr. Crummles take their brandy and the pipe in front of the fire. Now, my young sir, stop me if you wish, but it seems to me that you are uneasy in your mind. What's the matter? I am concerned. About? Oh, very mundane matters. Getting something that will keep me and my fellow traveller in the common necessities of life. You must have guessed that by now. And what's to be got at Portsmouth more than any other place? Well, there are always ships leaving the port. I shall try for a berth on one of them. There's meat and drink to be had there, at any rate. Salt meat and raw rum, peas pudding and weevil biscuits. No, I, I can rough it as well as most men of my age and habits. You'd need to rough it if you went on board ship, but you won't. Why not? Because there's not a skipper or mate would think you worth your salt when you can get a practised hand, and they are as plentiful as oysters on the streets. Men aren't born seamen. You must be able to learn the trade. So you must, but not at your age. And not if you're a gentleman. <sighs> Does no other profession occur to you which a young man of your figure could take up easily and see the world to advantage in? No. Why, then, I'll tell you one. The stage. The stage? I am in the theatrical profession. My wife is in the profession. My children are in the profession. I had a dog that lived and died in it. My chaise pony goes on in Timur the Tartar. I'll bring you out. And your friend, too. Say the word. I want a novelty. But I don't know anything about it. I never acted a part in my life, except at school. There's genteel comedy in your walk and manner. Juvenile tragedy in your eyes. And you're a man of education. You could write our advertising bill. Well, I suppose I could do that. Why? You could write a piece for the company. I don't know about a play, but, but I, I of suppose course I could. you could a short comedy piece <sighs> using a real pump and two washing tubs. What? I bought them cheap in London, just the thing. Can you draw? No. Never mind. But uh, if could I live by it? How much would I get? You'd live like a prince with your wages and your friends and the writing. Why? A pound a week. <laughs> you don't say so. I do, and with a good run, you might double it. What do you say? <laughs> Nicholas shrugs his shoulders, but sheer destitution is before him. Well, sir, what do you say? I say, yes, <laughs> and here's my hand on it. <laughs> <laughs> Onward and upward, brave soul of mine. Farewell, and never think of me.